Hello everybody. Now we will try to discuss the real solution. We have discussed the regular solution, the case of the ideal solution. Now in case of the real solution, uh, what are the assumptions uh, we made in case of the ideal solution or regular solution? So that we will try to discuss and how far we reach the real solution uh, from the discussion of the ideal solution and the uh, regular solution. So in case of uh, this thing uh, the we normally started with the ideal solution, the configuration entropy and we neglected the enthalpy of mixing. But in regular solution there we just we consider the interatomic bonding uh, on the free energy of the binary solution uh, in, in uh, and discuss the regular solution, the calculation different uh, how what are the estimation of the use free energy change associated with the regular solution. But Configuration entropy and interatomic bonding or free energy of the binary solution is basically practically limited. Practically, there must be some other limitation or uh, the assumptions is not very close to the real solution. So, these two assumptions, configurational entropy and bonding and interatomic bonding energy on uh, to calculate the free energy change, in case of the real solution, it is basically oversimplified nature. Now, in alloy, actually where the enthalpy of mixing is not 0. In that case, the assumptions of the random arrangement of atoms in equilibrium is not actually true because in equilibrium the arrangement of the atoms uh, which are in the, uh, random arrangement of the atoms is not true. So, that is the one aspect deviation from the other cases. So, therefore, delta G mix what we have calculated may not be able to give the estimate the uh, free energy in case of the real solution. Now, we can look into other aspects also. In actual arrangement of the atoms, we need to compromise that tends to be the lowest internal energy the in, in case of the uh, actual uh, solution. So, always tend to having the internal energy consistent, but along with the sufficient entropy will be there or sufficient entropy means the uh, more randomness to the solution and that should be accounted to achieve the minimum free energy. So, that is how we calculated this is the bonding energy epsilon equal to epsilon a b minus half of epsilon a a plus epsilon b b in case of the binary solution. Now, if the epsilon less than 0, the internal energy of the system is reduced and here the reduced, but accommodated by increasing the number of a b bonds. Okay, this is the one case, but when epsilon greater than 0, that means effective bonding energy is greater than 0. In this case, the internal energy can be reduced, but in that case it is possible by increasing the number of A A bonds and B B bonds. So, that is possible by clustering of the atoms in the A rich and the B rich and into a two different groups. We can see the from the figure also. So, figure A is basically in epsilon less than 0 internal energy of this by increasing the number of A B bonds, we can we can increasing we can increase the uh, uh, the internal energy of the system is actually reduced. So, this is the one case. Second case, the uh, clustering of the atoms, but in this case, if the epsilon greater than 0. So, that means here epsilon greater than 0, minimizes when epsilon less than 0, minimization of the internal energy you try to achieve. Uh, uh, by this particular uh, atomic arrangement. So, that means the, the increasing the number of A B bonds. So, that is why the atoms can be arranged. In, in, in this case, even also here epsilon greater than 0, if this is a situation, the, in that case also we can reduce the formation of the internal energy in the solution just by clustering of the atoms, A rich atom, B rich atom making the grouping, clustering of the atom, the number of um, bonds can be A A and B B bonds can be increase. So, these are the two effective ways th uh, theoretically we can say that the internal energy of the system can be reduced. Now, uh, we can see that the degree of ordering or clustering will decrease as the temperature increases. So, clustering things can be uh, uh, can be decreases once the temperature actually increases because at uh, the high temperature the randomness will also increases and that the in influence of the entropy will be there. 
So, that is why the entropy, entropy of mixing is more important when it the raise the temperature as compared to the low temperature. So, that is why here the entropy mixing will play a role at the, uh, to estimate the configuration of the atom. So, therefore, in system where there is a apart from this thick uh, this uh, this uh, reducing the in uh, reducing the enthalpy of the mixing there is a other factor. So, that is called the size difference of the atoms which is very much important uh, which is uh, in case of the real solution definitely real solution there might be having some say very the similar that means almost similar size of the atoms we can make a binary solution or there is a wide difference in, in the size of the atoms to create the binary solution. So, therefore, size atoms the size effect will also matter here in case of the real solution. Now, when there is a size difference between the atoms, so quasi chemical model that means underestimated change of the internal energy because when we have estimated the internal energy just the bonding energy between the atoms and we are assuming the atom A and B having the almost similar size or similar structure. But if there is a size difference then it actually underestimate the actual bond energy what we have done internal energy. So, on mixing because the elastic strain energy is not considered so size difference is much there. So, uh, that will create some kind of the elastic strain field and this is associated with some amount of the elastic strain energy. Now, when size difference is, to, is large then the effect of the strain field will be dominating rather than the bond, bond energy between the atoms. So, over the chemical term that means bond energy. So, then now if when the size difference is too much then the interstitial solid solution will form and that is the energetically more, more favorable to form the interstitial solid solution if the at size difference between the two atoms is too high. So, therefore, these are the typical factor or aspects we need to consider when you try to analyze the real solution. But we are not I am not showing into the calculation that how to estimate the Gibbs energy because it becomes more complicated if we consider all these factors uh, to estimate. But just to know uh, the understanding of the 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 different aspects of the real solution and how it is deviating from the ideal or regular solution. Now, in case of the one particular system when there is a strong chemical bonding between the atoms is there. So, definitely there is a tendency for the formation of the intermetal intermetallic phases and then it produces a completely different crystal structure from the pure components A and B. We will start to understand that how intermetallic phases actually form and how it is related to the Gibbs free energy change that will uh, we will see that. Before that what is the order phase uh, here the order phase is the assume the atoms in a substitutional solid solution are randomly arranged and each atom position is equivalent. So, substitutional solid solution randomly arranged means when substitutional solution, solution is preferable when there is a size difference of the atom is very low actually in that case they will try to form the substitutional solid solution. Now, in that case each atom position is basically equivalent position. Now, the probability that a uh, given site in the lattice will contain only the A atom is similar to the probability of the uh, B atom. So, in that case so therefore, this probability contain A atoms equal to the fraction of the A atom definitely the probability is depends on the what is the number of A atoms or fraction of atoms presence there in the solution. And therefore, this is also true in case of the solution B also. So, here also the probability of formation of the uh, this taking the lattice site contain the B atoms is similar to the number of B atoms presence or volume fraction of the B atoms presence in this particular solution. Now, this we can hold calculate the in this case the P A B the, the number of bonds between atoms A and B the N A Avogadro's number Z uh, uh, here in, in terms in, in Z also and then X A X B the fraction and from there uh, this we can see that that uh, omega we calculated and then this this we know this expression. Now, if omega less than 0 and the number of A and A and B bonds between A and B bonds is greater than this. In that case, the solution is contained the short range order. So, that is called SRO. So, in that case and therefore, degree of ordering 
can be measured in the particular parameter S which is defined like that P is the number of bonds between uh, atoms A and B and uh, P A B if the solution atom C and B is randomly oriented or maybe random solution in that case here also P A B random solution and P is the maximum uh, number of um, uh, bond between A and B is possible in the solution. So, this indicates the degree of ordering parameter associated uh, in, in this case we can say whether it is short range order or long range order of the atoms in the solution and that is associated with the real solution. Now, S P A B here we have defined the maximum number of possible bonds and the random maximum number of possible bonds in a random solution. Now, we can take an example also. So, dif uh, difference we try to understand the difference between the random and short range order uh, solution. So, here the random solution A and B solution with total number of 100 atoms and of course, in the random solution the probability is more or less same for the atoms A and B and of course, there is no size difference between atoms A and B. So, therefore, x A and x B is the more or less half 0.5 and P A B number of uh, possible bonds between atom A and B uh, in case of the random solution this uh, it is a 100 for example, we can assume. So, uh, of course, we are having the total number of random A B solution with the total number of 100 atoms then total number of possible is the solution equal to P A B 100. Now, if we calculate the S then it becomes actually 0. So, therefore, we can say that in a random solution the degree of ordering is basically 0, but same alloy with the short range order. So, in short range order then P A B the, uh, the number of uh, bond formation between A and B 132 for example, and P maximum possible the bonding between A and B atoms can be possible 200 depending upon the arrangement of the atoms. In if this is the case then S can be calculated is that P A B 132 minus 100 divided by the maximum 200 and number of P A B random is associated to the number of atoms A. So, basically in the number of atoms in a random solution the possible number of uh, um, bonding between atoms A and B is the number of atoms in that case. So, if we calculate the degree of ordering here it becomes 0.32. So, this is some value we are getting when the try to estimate the degree of ordering in a binary solution. Similarly, the long range order also the solution it is basically composition is close to the ratio of the A and B atoms. So, long range order is follow over a long distance the, the order is followed as compared to the short range order. So, I mean to say that the long range order or short range order in that case the in a, a solution uh, arrangement of the atoms can be uh, here the degree the this parameter degree of ordering is the one parameter just we can we can get some understanding of the the short range order or long range order solution. Now, in the order phase also we can take an example that uh, in a binary solution of the copper and gold alloy, copper and gold both are having FCC and totally miscible that means at any proportion way they can mix with respect to each other. Now, in the order structure the substitutional structure in copper and gold system the figure indicates that we can at high temperature disorder structure you can see that high temperature atoms can occupy at any site. So, it becomes more disorder and here also copper and gold I think not there is not much difference in the size difference of the atoms. So, therefore, they can take any sites and lattice position and therefore, we can consider this as a random atom. So, high temperature disorder structure and you can indicate this can kind of the random atoms when you making making the uh, structure between copper and gold. Now, at low temperature when the solution is more or less the uh, this x fraction of copper and fraction of alloy more or less same 0.5 mixture and they can form the order structure in which copper and gold atoms are arranged in a particular alternate layer. So, to some extent it can create some kind of the order structure and that is possible at a relatively low temperature. So, second figure we can see even we can say this as a copper gold at the super lattice because layer the particular layer arrangement it follows, but in that case the other case in the third case the each atom position is no longer equivalent and is described as the copper gold super lattice that we can see that in case of B also. 
but in apart from this copper gold super lattice in alloy with the composition may also happen the Cu3 AU this may also form that is called another super lattice it can form and that is the corresponds to the uh, figure C. Here you can see that uh, in the in the ordered structure ordered phases or that when you binary solution try to make they can depending upon the temperature they can create one is the very disordered structure and they can create ordered phases also ordered structure one particular temperature and specifically at the low temperature or at the different in the different order structure and the, this order can be followed either one layer by layer on some other atomic arrangement such that it will they can create the super lattice in one Cu AU and other cases it can create the super lattice Cu3 AU. Now the entropy of mixing of the structure with the low range order is extremely small we can see that the entropy of mixing in the lower uh, range order is extremely small and the degree of order decreases with temperature. So, degree of definitely degree of order decreases with temperature, temperature increases and then S degree of order is actually decreases. So, low temperature more order structure at high temperature we can expect the disorder structure and there must be some critical temperature where there is uh, there is not having uh, low range uh, uh, order structure L R O. Uh, large uh, sorry large range order structure. So, large range order structure then might be having some critical temperature below which only the large range of the order structure we can get. So, this temperature is the maximum when the composition is the ideal required for the super lattice. So, uh, when it, it try to create some kind of the super lattice the composition ideal requirement of the super lattice is basically reaches and the, uh, at, at the maximum temperature when it is this is the ideal composition for the super lattice then it creates some kind of the super lattice structure and maybe the super lattice structure can be different here we can get the example it can be Cu A, Cu AU or Cu 3 AU both are possible. Now here you can see that the configuration of the atoms that has the minimum free, free energy after mixing may not have the same crystal structure as the pure component. In this particular case what you can observe that atoms might be having minimum free energy, but after mixing might not be having the similar kind of the crystal structure and that is true in case of the real solution also. Now this new structure is basically known as the intermediate structure. Now intermediate phases are often actually based on the ideal atom ratio definitely inter. So, ideal particular atomic ratio it follow to create the some intermediate phase and that is also uh, that also basically results in the minimum amount of the Gibbs free energy. So, here you can see the for composition that deviates from the ideal the free energy giving is characteristic U shape curve of the G curve we can see that here the composition for the ideal ratio of the between the uh, two components for example, in a solution of A and B if that is deviate from this thing then at particular point there might be having some over a the Gibbs free energy curve is something like that and that is called that that is true in case of the ideal solution. The very localized position or over a narrow uh, composition there is a there is a uh, minimum values of the Gibbs free energy we can observe and it is uh, defined by the U shape curve. Therefore, the range of the composition over is the free energy curve has a meaningful existence that actually range of the depends on the structure of the phases and the types of the interatomic bonding depends on the interatomic bonding whether metallic covalent or ionic these are the different types of the interatomic bonding actually decides some meaningful existence the over a certain range of the composition one particular phase so ideal that is the uh, phase for the uh, this that uh, this free energy curve the existence it depends on that that composition ideal composition ratio and the atomic bonding it is having. So, here we can see that free energy curve for intermediate phase here you can see the free energy some intermediate phase some ideal composition it can create and A for an intermediate compound with a very narrow stability range that means over a narrow range of the composition and other case the for an intermediate phase with a wide stability range. So, stability wide stability range 
it is the low curvature and the very high curvature is the narrow stability range both way that ideal composition can exist and it can create some kind of the intermediate phase uh, characterized by the minimum amount of the Gibbs free energy and typical in a U shape curve G curve and uh, might be having following some kind of the ideal atomic ratio. So, when small composition deviations cause a rapid rise in the G phase. So, small composition change. So, that means narrow range is composition change is very narrow. So, small composition there is drastic re reduction in the Gibbs free energy or maybe I can say that change in the free uh, Gibbs free energy is very drastic over a small variation in the composition. Then that is referred to as the intermetallic compound and usually follow so the fixed uh, fixed ratio. So, where in the form of a A m B n and where m and n are integers. So, in that general form it the intermediate intermetallic compound actually form. In other structure fracturation of the composition can be tolerated by a uh, same atoms, but occupying the wrong positions or by atom sites being left vacant and this case the curvature is G is much less. So, it is a having limited uh, this thing over a range of the composition the stability may exist uh, it can form some kind of the uh, compound intermetallic compound. So, therefore, we can see the intermetallic compound can form over a small deviation of the composition and very rapid change in the G curve. Now, if you try to look in the equilibrium of the uh, this heterogeneous system. So, so far uh, we have discussed the um, that uh, that uh, this equilibrium uh, uh, that uh, the G curve in case of the one single pure component system and binary solution also we have discussed the um, curve in that case we assume that both are in different the same phase or maybe similar kind of the crystal structure. But suppose in heterogeneous system in general if we assume the A and B do not have the same crystal structure they are not are having the similar same crystal structure in pure state uh, at a particular given temperature. For example, stable, stable form of the pure element A is the alpha phase and stable form of the pure B is the beta phase and that exists at a particular temperature and pressure. So, in that case we are assuming that for example, alpha is having F stable form of the alpha is having FCC structure and stable form of the beta phase having the BCC structure. Now, in this heterogeneous system what you can draw the Gibbs free energy curve. So, here molar free energy curve for the alpha phase molar free energy curve alpha phase is that we, we can draw these things. Now, here molar free energy for the FCC alpha, but alpha phase is having the stable structure of the alpha phase is having FCC alpha it is a stable and BCC beta are the points A and B. So, here FCC A alpha and BCC beta it represented is BCC beta is the this point, but we are, I am drawing here from A to C. Now, assuming that stable BCC B B atoms arrangements into unstable FCC alpha atoms in that case increase or the free energy. So, this is the stable beta phase stable. Um, component B, but this beta phase this is having the, the free energies at this point B. Now, if we try to make consider this thing stable BCC beta arrangements into an unstable FCC alpha, then there must be some increment of the Gibbs free energy. So, here the increment B to C is the increment of the Gibbs free energy. So, therefore, FCC alpha atoms increase or increase of free energy increase of free energy in the BCC. So, here you can see this is the G, G. So, this curve is called basically G alpha. So, with alpha phase structure. So, G alpha, alpha phase structure. Here also you can see the G alpha, this is one phase and this is for the beta phase, G beta, this uh, curve. And here composition A, composition B, and XP is gradually varying. So, AF, here the AF is the difference in the free energy between the BCC A and FCC A composition A, but here the phase is for F stable F, uh, F phase is the alpha FCC. This is the stable phase, stable phase of component A um, for uh, FCC structure for the component A. And so, here for all are having FCC A is the stable phase and that is the indication of this thing, but 
BCC A is taking this point. So, this is the difference in the free energy between BCC A and FCC A so, that means two different phases, but composition of uh, this thing is the A, A I mean that means component A. So, therefore, first step of the drawing the free energy cup of FCC alpha phase, we can convert the stable BCC arrangement of the B atoms into an unstable FCC arrangement. This requires an increase in the Gibbs free energy that we have already discussed this Gibbs free energy BCC and uh, uh, amount this in and the free energy curve for alpha phase be constructed by mixing of the FCC A and B FCC B both way you can mixing this thing you can make this kind of so therefore delta G mix at particular for alpha delta G mix for alpha of composition X phase alpha of composition x this is the value delta g mix it indicated by d into e. So, this similar procedure can be followed for the beta phase also where distance a f uh, free energy between b c c and f c c a that we have already explained the b here the a f is the difference in the free energy between b c c a and f c c a. So, this way we can construct the Gibbs free energy curve uh, for the uh, two different phases uh, coexisting together. So, therefore, we can say see this we can tell that a rich alloy will have the lowest free energy as a homogeneous alpha phase and beta rich alloy as a beta phase. So, therefore, having the lowest free energy having the lowest free energy. Now, if the alloy with the composition near the crossover in the G curve in the here you can the composition near the crossover in the G curve in that case the total energy can be minimized by atom separating into the two phases. So, therefore, at any point the total energy will be minimized it is possible to get the total free energy if we separate the, the atoms into the two different phases and based on that we can estimate the what is the free energy when there is a composition of the in case of the G car. I think that is all uh, for uh, this equilibrium of the heterogeneous system. Uh, we can discuss much more in the different uh, topics associated with the thermodynamic principle in solid vacation processing. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Mm -hmm.